Hey there, and welcome back to my channel, Weirdly OCD, and this is going to be part three and the last part of organizing a garage sale. So if you watched the last two parts of this little mini-series, you know that I talked about uh, kind of how to prepare yourself for a garage sale, some tips I've given you, things like that. Um, and today's video is going to be over the course of two days. It's going to be over Thursday, which is today, where we're going to set up our yard sale. Originally, I wasn't going to set it up till tomorrow, the morning of the yard sale, but Tony and my mom both said that it would probably be a smart idea to set it up tonight. That way, I'm not having to rush around and try and do everything tomorrow morning, especially because you know how people are with yard sales. We have ours from 9 to 4 tomorrow, and I'll probably have people start showing up around 8.30. So we went ahead and decided we are going to start setting up today. Um, and we're going to do it here in the garage. That way, if it happens to rain, it's not supposed to, but if it does happen to rain, I can just shut the garage door and we're good. So um, let's go ahead and get this thing started. So one way that we are going to set up some tables for our yard sale because we don't have actually tables is my dad has four saw horses and a couple just kind of not really junk doors but doors he's not using for anything so we're going to put the saw horses and uh, or set up the saw horses and put the doors on top of them for like makeshift tables and then I have about seven snack trays because we have two sets of snack trays in our house one in our living room and one down the basement, the family room. And I'm gonna set those up and kind of make like a middle aisle here since they're skinnier so people can kind of walk around. So we're gonna go ahead and get that set up and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so phase one of setting up the yard sale is complete. We have the table set up. Um, as you can see here, we've got a couple snack trays and um, one of the doors set up here, all ready to go along this wall. And then I've got two of the saw horses and a door set up here and three snack trays here with a sheet on it. The reason we put the sheet over these snack trays is because they're kind of retro looking and we just don't want people asking, are they for sale, are they for sale? Um, and then the fourth one of those that we have the cover on, I'm going to use as like my checkout area. And then, as you can see, we kind of just shoved all this in the back of the garage. I'm gonna be sitting well in front of this, so hopefully people won't ask hey, is that for sale and that for sale? Because none of this is for sale. Um, so we have the first part all set up. And now the next phase, we are going to put our items out and get them all set up. All right, we are officially set up for our yard sale. Good morning. It is Friday morning, the day of our yard sale, and we are pretty close to opening up. It's almost 9 o'clock. Um, everything is priced, ready to go for any potential customers. I'll give you a shot here. I don't know how well you can see that with the light from the street, but I'll give you a little tour here real quick before anybody shows up, hopefully. We've got just a different few different knickknacks here, some Christmas stuff, a bunch of books. My parents also brought over some stuff this morning they wanted to get rid of. Um, also, a tip. I've seen people do this, this at other yard sales too, but so first I have to have the yard sale permit hanging just in case someone from the city were to happen to stop by and want to make sure it's legit. So we are legit, we're legal. Um, but I also made these signs that say, 
No tools are for sale because I'm not selling any of our tools. Um, and not responsible for accidents. I've actually seen a, a lot of garage sales do that. Put up a sign that says not responsible for accidents. Um, now I don't know if that means like you break it, you buy it, or what the case is, but I put those up on each side of the garage just to have my butt covered. So we have some stuff here. Of course I put stuff out here in the driveway so it hopefully entices people to stop by. Again, there's another one of those signs. Over here in the clothing, I didn't separate it really by type, but I separated it more by size. And I just made little labels of the different sizes, like here on the table. Um, you definitely want to label stuff. That way people aren't like, what's this size? What's that size? And they're tearing everything apart. Oops, sorry, you can't see me. Um, then we got some other stuff here. Some board games, a few different knickknacks here, and a bunch of storage. <laughs> uh, a lot of this is from my back to school Dollar Tree haul video, and I'm not going to really use it, so I put 50 cents on each. Um, I got my little area set up here with my coffee and our cash ready to go. Um, I know that a uh, subscriber had recommended that like maybe I wear an apron and keep the money on me. But in all honesty, I'm not really planning on moving from that spot. And if I need to, Tony can come out and sit there if I need to go out or whatever. Or use the bathroom. But anyway, our yard sales are hung out here on the post. And we're ready to go and I'll let you know how it goes. The yard sale is over. Um, and we did pretty good. Uh, we made... Profit-wise, about almost $70, which isn't bad for seven hours of work. That's $10 an hour. Um, and so we got all this cleaned up. The tables have been dismantled and everything. Um, I got those back here and soul horses ready to go back to my parents. Um, mostly everything that we did not sell, we packed up in the car and we took to Goodwill. Um, so... We got that. Um, I did get a receipt from Goodwill. They asked um, if I wanted one, and I said yes, only because it was a really big amount of stuff that I was donating. But on the slip, it just shows where you mark the number of pieces that you donated, but I'm not sure how you would write that off on your taxes. So if anybody can give me any advice on that, I would greatly appreciate that. But the things that we decided to keep were the big clock, we're definitely going to try and find a spot for this um, just because it's so retro and it's cool. Uh, we got to find a spot for it. Um, the snack trays, we used, we already had those. Those were used to make our tables. Um, the clothes here, I ended up keeping because I'm going to try and sell them online. Um, and I end up keeping the books because I'm going to see maybe if I can donate those to the local library. Um, the pool table here that I have, the mini pool table, I'm going to give that to a friend for her two um, young boys. And this oil lamp, my parents brought over to sell, and since it didn't sell, we're actually going to keep it just for like an extra emergency light. Um, but, as far as that, we are all cleaned up, set to go. Um, I'm so glad I can bring the car in the garage now. But, all in all, it was a pretty successful yard sale. Um, we had a decent turnout. There were a couple spots there where it was kind of like crickets, but that's okay. I kept myself entertained with the radio and uh, had a couple snacks and things like that. And Tony came out and talked to me here and there. But all in all, I think we did pretty good. Um, but with that, that is today's video. I hope you enjoyed this little mini series. If you plan on having a yard sale, um, Go for it, <laughs> especially if you live in an area like mine where winter sometimes likes to creep up early because um, I'm no stranger to having snow in October here in Ohio. So, but with that, that is today's video and the last part of this series, and I will see you all on Wednesday. Have a great day. Bye-bye. So, real quick, before I go, I did want to just give you a couple of tips. Um, one... Do not refuse any offers. Uh, I had a subscriber that gave me a ton 
of advice um, a couple of days before our yard sale. Miss Purple Potato, thank you very much. Uh, she told me, don't refuse any offers. And it makes sense. You want the stuff gone. That's why you were putting it in the yard sale. Um, so if someone offers you a couple dollars less on something, take it. You're making something off of it, which is better than nothing at all. Um, so I had a couple people, not really a whole lot, but a couple people asked me if I would take a little less on a couple items. And I said, yep, absolutely. So sold it, made some money off of it. Um, my other piece of advice would be just to greet everybody when they come in. Don't be on your cell phone. Yeah, I had my cell phone with me to keep me entertained, like I would scroll through Facebook or watch a couple YouTube videos when there was absolutely nobody shopping our garage sale or even approaching the yard sale. Um, I was not on my phone. That way I can have my total attention for them, greet them, thank them for stopping by. That's another thing too, even if somebody doesn't buy anything from your yard sale, you should still thank them because they did take the time out of their day to stop by your yard sale and see what you had. Um, also, um, you know, just advertise, as I said before, where you're comfortable advertising. We didn't advertise on Craigslist. We did it through Nextdoor uh, and Garage Sale Finder and a couple Facebook groups and uh, with just a couple signs here right outside on the pole in front of our house. And that did the trick. We actually had a decent turnout. Now, granted, it does help that we live on a somewhat busy street, um, but still, we had a pretty decent turnout. And one final thing, we did have a goal that if we um, earned so much from the yard sale, we were going to uh, buy ourselves a little treat for our house. If you've been watching me for a while, you know that our house is decorated in 60s and 70s decor. Well, we have found ourselves an authentic retro couch for our living room. So here it is. I absolutely love this couch. It's in perfect condition. The cushions do not sink. There are no rips, no tears, nothing. We got this for $25 from a girl that was selling it on Facebook. Um, and I told Tony, I said, if we make enough money from the art sale, we've got to go get it. So we went and looked at it and we brought it home. So she's got a new home now. And these four little plaques here behind me on the wall were not here before. And because this couch, the back of it is a little lower than the one we had here before, um, I thought this would be a cool place to put these um, right underneath this mantle. And because this couch is kind of retro, it enabled us to bring out our gold chairs that have been down in the family room of the basement. I love those gold chairs. They're comfortable and they rock and they swivel. But now with that, that's the end of today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed seeing what we spent a little of our garage sale money on. Um, and I will see you all on Wednesday for sure now. Bye-bye.